Vibes Cartel proven innocent. Big twist in Cartel Jura trial. Attorney for Vibes Cartel, Valerie Nita Robinson, says that the evidence submitted yesterday in the trial of Livingston King, the juror accused of attempting to bribe the jury in the DJ's 2014 murder case, yet again raises question about whether the world boss was fairly treated in his murder trial. You hear that? <laughs> Serious thing this now people can have. That's some things to talk about, right? Kane was arrested and charged with attempting to pervert the course of justice after he allegedly sought to bribe the fellow jurors to return a not guilty verdict. Remember how that is going on? He made, um, they actually have him in a trial now. Livingston Kane said, he made a dry bribe the other juror them for the vice cartel not guilty. You see it? So, them use that in essence as you know, a means of saying that you see, saying really guilty because I bribed the other juror of them, so that's what they were doing. But them catch up on them now, cause here we go on. Uh huh. As was the case in Cartel's trial, subsequent appeal, serious questions have been raised about the validity of audio recordings being relied on by the Crown. An information technology professional on Thursday testified in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court that two audio recordings of the conversation said to be between the jurors, the female foreman and Kane appeared to have been doctored. You hear that? A professional said that. Information and technology professional on Thursday testifying in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court that two audio recordings of the conversation said to be between the jurors, female foreman and Kane appear to have been doctored. This is the evidence where they might try to use with Livingston Kane for say the man that tried to bribe the rest of the jury of them for survives cartel innocent so him get off a trial. Remember now that I story them a try say and know that audio where they may put forth prove that this audio that was brought forth for say the man that tried to bribe them was doctored. A professional state that yeah, you understand me say people so Whoa, that 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 alone, we didn't even need for going further. But we are going to go through this and then we we'll talk about it. You see what I say? Defense lawyers had also questioned the credibility of evidence used to convict Vibes Cartel. For instance, they argued that the evidence presented during their 17 week murder trial, which ended in April 2014, showed that the metadata was created on July 6, 2011, six weeks before prosecutions claimed the victim Clive, Clive Williams was killed. So, I say six weeks before. How is that going to be possible? You understand what I say? So, if the man, um, them claims the man did, um, Friday, today, where may I record this? Then claims I'm dead today. Then how comes a message they record like three, four weeks ago saying I'm dead already? You understand know, message people? So you can't see that straight up. And you know the metadata hold the information stored um, for like tell when the, the data, when the text right. Metadata refers to a set of data that describes and gives information about other data. You understand? So, and it's not where you can really, you can't tamper with the date when it's written. You understand? You can't tamper with the data, but not the date when it was written. So, that are the thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, they use this for, um, as a, a means of um, validating if something, you know, was actually done on what date and when. Yeah. Um, the prosecution had countered that pointed to say that there was no proof to show that the digital evidence, including phones that were seized from cartel, were manipulated and altered. You understand? So the prosecution has said there is no way, um, you know, they, that that them there is no proof that show that digital evidence was tampered with. You know, so that's a lie because metadata show you that and you can't tamper with metadata. You can't tamper with the data, but not the metadata. So anybody write that at that particular time, the data can see every night. You see what I'm saying? So it shows that it was tampered with. That's evidence right there. More than enough evidence. Splicing the audio. We'll get to this now, people. The recording in Kane's case were taken from a BlackBerry mobile phone believed to have been used to record a conversation. The witness told the court that he found clear evidence of splicing in the audio files. Hmm. He also said that the stop, line, stop time for the recording was too clean, suggesting that the audio have been edited. Alright, I can attest to that too, as an um, editor, you know what I mean, we do audio editing and all of that. Um, yeah, if you are going to use an audio from a different source, 
are different, you know what I mean? Than actually that Blackberry phone because they got have some noise, you know what I mean? Or they call ambient noise in the background. So when I say too clean, you can hear say there's no ambient noise for proof, say you see me, I said that recording was done in the same place or done on that particular device. You know what I mean? It shows say it take out or edited or record after and then edited and put on the phone. This is what I say. So basically, that's what I say. Nita Robinson, who is also representing Kane, told Weekend Star that the evidence in yesterday's court proceedings show that this was a case of manipulation and tampering in recordings. I wouldn't go any further except to say there must be some motivation behind it. Clearly, people don't do things unless they are in um, there is a reason. She said, which is right, there must be a reason why they tampered with it. And it's obvious, you don't need to even state no more. That's why she said she won't even go any further. She just state that because there's obviously a motivation behind this. Um, it was also revealed that no forensic image, which would be re a replica of the data on the mobile device, was made. In the absence of this, the export experts said that the forensic integrity of the recordings could not be validated and thus are unreliable. Nita Robertson said that in addition to the perceived recorded tampering, the phone was never available for examination by the defense. You hear that? The defense was not able to, you know what I mean, get the phone to examine the information. Because if they were able to examine the phone, we may have found other things like when the date stamp was changed. Alright, so she has said if they been able to examine the phone, then would I say the metadata would have shown when the audio was you know tampered with because as you hear the audio professional stated earlier that the splicing you know even the end of the the, the, the voice notes and man, all of that it's not it's it too clear you know there's no ambient background noise there's no you know background you must hear some kind of background it's just too clear when you examine it so you can see say it was tampered with but they're not able to tell exactly when it was tampered with obviously because she know which is the foreman did not have the phone to give us this is what she said she went shopping in new york and lost the phone no man how convenient is that how convenient is that that sounds to me very strange to any logical minded person you would have think to yourself say how why is this the, the, the more why the phone even there in new york why phone gone overseas Anyways, um, <laughs> that is what she said. So this is what the foreman said out her own mouth. Nita Robertson told the Weekend Star, I don't see how if it is that the court is going to rely on her saying she recorded this thing and it is shown not to be valid, then where do you think we stand? Kane's trial is set to continue October 23rd. As far as I see, there don't need to be a continuation of the trial. What I need for you to know is say, alright, shit, we, we done messed up everything already. Might as well with us, with us in a trial, uh, free the juror, free vibes cartel, free Sean Stan, free the world of the man, uh, and just cut with losses because we that try lock him up and it just never work. You understand? I'm better, I'm better I need to apologize to. I mean, like, apology wouldn't even work. You know, guys and nation don't even want to hear no apology because it's so messed up, yo. I mean, I said it's just coming from a fan. You know what I mean? Because it could be anyone that we lock up or anyone that we get charged or lock up just like that. Anyone out there. Because this has been going on for the longest time. You know what I mean? A lot of people get, you know, pinned in from pinned um so-called evidence and pin so-called pin so-called evidence on them and thing and then try to create a story. You know what I mean? Which that's why I'm gonna rate their movement. You see how the FBI work, look on six nine trials. FBI go the extra mile. They might get your every detail of information and now fabricate things to try to get innocent people locked up in this case the man innocent and not try to lock up the juror and, in that, and, and also in the case of vice cartel man innocent and not lock him up so what I say I don't say nothing more upon the case I just hope say them you know what I mean come to the realization soon say you know the longer them them draw this thing out you know the worse that will be for them at the end of the day they need to free up the man and just you know what I mean just, just admit to them wrong and you know that at the end of it, so I may say, don't know DCS TV this. Thanks for tuning in as always. And don't um, look out by later, I'm gonna drop the review for um, Superhero Love by Vibes Cartel because you don't know the things that are already, yeah, man. Bad tune, I'm gonna have to review the thing. Best of yourself. Thanks for tuning in as always. I'm out.
Just know yourself Bad man can't do me nothing if you believe in them 